Hello and welcome to Compass Global Markets Weekly Update. I'm Tony Boyajian. Well, it kicked off on Friday night when the US payrolls data, the jobs number, were released. It was much better than expected. It rose by 222,000 for the month of June when the forecast was for 175,000 increase. Now, the May job number were also revised higher from 138,000 to 152,000. So that was good news for the US dollar. But the unemployment rose, unemployment rate rose to 4.4% due to a slightly higher participation rate. So given the US economy is near full employment, most of the focus was taken away from the jobs number to the average hourly earnings figure. Uh, now this number uh, for the month of June is a better indicator of future US interest rate movements. And it came in at 2.5% per annum, 2.5% for the month of June. Uh, versus forecasts of 2.6%, but the previous month's number was revised lower from 2.5% to 2.4%. So what does this mean? It means that stubbornly uh, US wages growth remain weak, and it suggests that the Fed's pace of interest rate hikes won't be as aggressive as initially expected. So this implies that the, the US economy is not strong enough to withstand US rate hikes. Now, attention will turn to Friday's inflation number in the US, the June CPI data. US inflation is currently around about 1.4% per annum, uh, and, but it remains quite low because it's below that Fed's target rate of 2%, and it has been for the past five years. Now, we expect the US dollar upside to remain limited because of the pressure from the, uh, from, from the wages figures, uh, but also, we expect US dollar weakness to linger because Fed Chair Janet Yellen speaks tomorrow and also on Thursday she, she provides comments at a testimony in front of the US uh, House and Senate Committee. So that could that could spark a little bit of interest in the market. Uh, in China, we saw you we saw uh, June inflation figures came come in around about expectations. So the CPI for June rose by one and a half percent per annum, and the producer price index, the PPI, rose by five and a half percent per annum as expected. China's consumer inflation target for this year remains unchanged from last year at three percent. Now, furthermore, China's economic expansion or growth level is expected to remain around six and a half percent per annum and the encouraging numbers we've seen out of China in particular the export and import growth figures um, and the subdued inflation numbers we saw early this week will continue to support the Aussie dollar and also keep commodity prices firm the Aussie dollar remains confined in the 75 and a half 76 and a half US cent range this week and um, especially after last week's confirmation from the Reserve Bank that their monetary policy outlook remains neutral. Well, the big mover uh, this week has been the US Japanese yen exchange rate. Dollar yen has risen by 1.6% over the past week. This follows the Bank of Japan's announcement that they will buy unlimited amounts of sovereign bonds uh, to continue its easing of monetary policy. Now, this comes whilst other central banks like the ECB, the Bank of England, and even the Bank of Canada have changed their rhetoric regarding interest rates. They're all talking about tighter monetary policy, which means higher interest rates there. Now, the yen has fallen by 5% against the US dollar over the past month as the BOJ, the Bank of Japan, tries to uh, raise consumer prices back up towards that 1% inflation target that they have. Also, Japan's current account surplus has narrowed from 4% to 3% of GDP, which will see uh, the yen remain weak. Now, that's good news for Aussie importers who have to buy Japanese yen because the Aussie yen is now near four-month highs above that 86 level. So a really good opportunity for Aussie importers to buy Japanese yen at these levels. Elsewhere, the euro dollar is expected to remain firm in light of the increased portfolio inflow we've seen into the eurozone, also the large current account surplus it enjoys, uh, and also this possibility that the ECB, the European Central Bank, may announce tapering of its asset purchase program, which is uh, certainly a tightening of monetary policy step. Uh, and that could see, uh, that could happen as early as next month uh, on the 20th of, uh, 20th of July, in fact this month on the 20th of July when the ECB next meets. 
Uh, last but not least, the sterling pound continues to weaken. Uh, we've seen uh, poor uh, manufacturing data, industrial production numbers, and overnight we saw uh, UK consumer spending fall to four-year lows. So it doesn't bode well for the sterling pound. Unemployment and wages figures will be the main focus this week on Wednesday. The market is pricing a 52% chance that we could see a UK rate rise of 25 basis points uh, by November this year. But given that the Prime Minister in the UK uh, does not have a lot of cross-party support, uh, it means the Brexit process uh, continues to be jeopardised and this is certainly a, a downfall for the sterling pound. Uh, the Canadian interest rates are also expected to be, uh, to be raised this week on Wednesday by 25 basis points. If it happens, it will be the first time in two years that Canada will have raised interest rates uh, following some really strong jobs data in that, in that country. Don't forget to follow us every Thursday lunchtime at 12.15 on Sky Business News on Foxtel and Optus Channel uh, for our uh, weekly live and exclusive financial markets coverage uh, on behalf of Compass Global Markets. Thanks for watching. I'm Tony Boyajian.